Greetings to everyone. My name is Anugrah Mishra and I'm an intern at UB Advocate. So the legal topic that I've chosen for my presentation is Unlawful Activities Prevention Act of 1967. To begin with, I would like to give everyone an overview of how this presentation is going to be. I divide my presentation into five different parts, beginning with the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, the law of 1967, as to know what exactly the law states. Then we'll find out some of the lacunas that were there in the pre-existing laws as, as it became the reason for why this law underwent amendment quite a number of times. And as I mentioned amendment, we'll later discuss an amendment bill that was being brought up in parliament in 2019, which added a completely new aspect to this law. UAPA in past several years has no more remained an unfamiliar term to the public. And therefore we'll find out that why UAPA has been in use so much. And after that, we'll find some of the reasons as to why this law needs to be given a second thought. With that, I would like to begin. Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, as the name suggests, was passed to prevent the unlawful activities happening around in India. To know what unlawful activities are, it is an activity or an action taken by an individual or an association to disrupt the territorial integrity or sovereignty of India. Since the act concerns the sovereignty of India as a whole, the regulations of these acts are quite strict, strict ones. Some of them are as follows. Death penalty and life imprisonment are its highest punishments. Both Indian and foreign nationals can be charged under it. It gives absolute power to the central government to declare an activity as unlawful just by the passage of an official gazette. Later, in 2004, the terrorist act was added to the list. Now, talking about the lacunas that were there in the pre-existing laws, UAPA has gone under amendment quite a number of times. In 2004, the Act saw an amendment making UAPA a terror law as well when Parliament inserted a chapter dedicating to terrorist activities. TADA and POTA, the previously existing laws, were insufficient to tackle the terror problems of the nation. TADA specifically and particularly was subjected to criticism, criticism by various human rights organizations. UAPA saw amendments in 2008 and 2009 in the aftermath of the 26-11 Mumbai terror attacks, and also in 2012 and later in 2019 to expand the scope of Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Now, issues such as terrorism, money laundering for terror financing are covered under the ambit of this law. Talking about the 2019 Amendment Bill, the 2019 Amendment Bill was brought up the Lok Sabha on July 8, 2019. The bill primarily had certain points that needed to be addressed, such as who may commit terrorism, giving the, cent the central government the power to designate any organization as a terrorist organization on four different grounds. Secondly, approval for the seizure of property by National Intelligence Agency. That approval of DGP is required by the investigating officer to seize properties that may be, connect that may be connected with terrorism. Investigation of a case that may only be conducted by the officers of the rank of deputy superintendent or the assistant com commissioner of the police or above. Fourthly, to include acts committed within the scope of any of the treaties listed in the schedule of the act. In the last two years, UAPA has been capturing the headlines of the news. The two most famous cases that took over all the newspaper headlines were that of the three activi activists who were charged with the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act for allegedly being a part of the protest against CAA 2020, which was a citizenship amendment bill brought up. And the case of the activist Stan Swami, who was booked for being a part of the violent incident happened in Bhima Kaurega. He, along with 15 activists, were booked under this law. The frequent application of UAPA indicates that it is often misused and abused, requiring a second thought to be given to the legislation for some possible reasons. And those some possible reasons could be as follows. Firstly, the vague definition of the terrorist act. The definition which is given in the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act completely differs from the definition given by the United Nations. The pendency of trial and denial of bail, and most importantly, the state overreach, giving the power to the central government to brand any ordinary citizen or activist without the actual commission of these acts under the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. All these, all these issues just brings our attention to one thing, 
and making it imperative to give this law a second thought. Thank you.